to see what we locate. That investigation will continue throughout today and probably the next couple of days. We are opening up a few streets around that area so traffic can flow more freely. Uh, but right now we're at very much at the investigative stage. I guess at this point I'd be prepared to answer questions if you've got any. Is there anything you can tell us about the two people you believe are still unaccounted for? Nothing specific. I'd be speculating at this point because they are unaccounted for. But given the 24 hours that's passed and the fact that our investigators have been able to locate a number of the other people from that building, uh, that were in that building and around that building and expected to be in that building yesterday morning, uh, I think, like I said, we should be prepared for what could be a difficult day. Uh, but beyond that, I couldn't speculate. But, but I mean, you know, you know the names, you know the people you're looking for? The investigators have a sense of who we're looking for, yes. Were they in the same apartment? No, they weren't. Anything more on the cause? Is there a chance it could be criminal in nature? Anything to leave, please believe that? We have absolutely no indication at this point that any criminality is involved in this explosion at all. The investigation is still very much underway. The final determination of the cause will be done by the Ontario Fire Marshal's Office. But I, I can't stress enough that right now we have an explosion and a fire and we have absolutely no evidence to indicate anything criminal in nature. Any danger to the surrounding public? No, none at all. No. The emergency responders yesterday responded very, very quickly. We had a police officer just around the corner, seconds away. On her arrival, she uh, recognized that it was an explosion situation. She immediately called in emergency responders. Our police officers, Woodstock police officers, were actually able to get ladders from neighboring residences and start the evacuation of people off the second and third floor balconies. On the arrival of the fire department, of course, they took over and joined in the uh, rescue operation, uh, getting people off the balconies and out of the building, and uh, and then it became a situation of trying to extinguish the fire. And the center part of that building at that point was fully engulfed, and uh, I, you can see from some of the news uh, footage uh, that's been aired, very toxic smoke, a lot of smoke, a lot of fire, a lot of devastation to that building. Chief, with the mayor declaring a state of emergency, what extra resources does that mean for you? We declared, uh, the mayor declared a, a limited emergency and what that did is made available to us some of the resources out of Toronto for the um, heavy duty rescue, search and rescue units. And we do have one of them on scene right now from the Toronto Police Service. We also have the OPP's heavy rescue, search and rescue unit also out of Calgary. Chief, was this building serviced by natural gas in any way? That'll be up to the investigators to determine. Really that's, you know, the, the engineers are gonna go through that building today and determine uh, a number of things. If it's safe to go in, uh, you know, potential causes to the explosion, and of course the fire marshal's office will work hand in hand with that. Was gas a concern? Because I know that they cut the gas off around the area. That's just a precaution. Can you update us on the people who were taken to the hospital uh, needing treatment on their conditions, and also on the people who have been displaced, where they are, how they're doing? I can. We had approximately five ambulances on scene almost immediately yesterday morning. Seven people were taken to hospital. Uh, six of them were released after being treated. One was held overnight just to be uh, observed, just for observation. We also had one firefighter, Don Brooks, that was injured yesterday during the initial response to the fire. He received, from what I'm advised, a broken leg, but he's also all right, and he was not admitted to hospital. How many people have been evacuated? That unit is a building of 45 units. I think we're probably looking in the neighborhood of uh, likely 100 people. And the, the Red Cross and the Salvation Army has been instrumental in helping us to assist those people that have been displaced. A lot of the people have been, uh, uh, if they haven't found a, a friend to go with, a family to go with, they've been housed at the Quality Inn under a, a evacuation procedure that we've had as 